This world loves blood. They love hands that shed innocent, innocent blood. They love to watch slasher movies and go to UFC fights to watch a person get the blood beat out of them. They love zombie video games and TV shows that contain loads of blood and gore. They love TV shows and movies about vampires. That, so they love blood, but this world hates the blood of Jesus Christ. And that is because the blood of Jesus Christ is what is between you and hell. We are going to look at the power of the blood. The shedding of the blood is what we're going to look at first. It is only because Jesus Christ shed his blood that we can have forgiveness of sins. Jesus shed his blood so that even a man with hands that shed innocent blood could come to him and believe on him, trusting in his perfect shed blood to save his soul. Hebrews 9.22 says, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. Without a blood sacrifice, no sin can be forgiven. God has required a blood sacrifice throughout the Bible for man to get forgiveness of his wicked sins. Before Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross, the Old Testament saints had to shed the blood of an animal. And God starts this out for man in Genesis 3.21, which says, Unto Adam also, and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them. A innocent lamb had to be slain to cover the sins of Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve would have no doubt told their children Cain and Abel that to get forgiveness for their sins there had to be a blood sacrifice. Abel believed his parents and offered the firstlings of his flock to God. And Genesis 4.4 4 says, And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. God had respect of Abel's sacrifice because God requires innocent blood for forgiveness of sins. Cain, on the other hand, didn't offer a blood sacrifice, and his sacrifice was rejected. Cain offered his fruit from the ground, and God had no respect for Cain's offering. Genesis 4, 5 says, But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect, and Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And this is where you get the saying, you can't get blood out of a turnip. So they got forgiveness of sins in the Old Testament, but they didn't have their sins cleared like New Testament saints have their So they got forgiveness of sins in the Old Testament, but they didn't have their sins cleared like New Testament saints. Exodus 34, 7 says, Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children and to the third and to the fourth generation during the passover the children of israel s sacrificed lambs and applied their blood to the doorposts the lord said when i see the blood i will pass over you Ex exodus twelve thirteen says and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are and when i see the blood i will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. In the New Testament you are saved. Then you have your sins washed in the blood of Jesus. And they aren't just temporarily covered. They are cleared. And when God sees you. He only sees the blood of Jesus Christ. The entire Old Testament is full of blood sacrifices. That got people forgiveness of sins. But these sacrifices still didn't clear their sins. Hebrews 10.4 says. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. And in Hebrews 10.11, And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. The ultimate sacrifice was Jesus Christ. He is the Lamb of God. John 1.29 says, The next day John seeth, Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. The Old Testament sacrifices could not clear the guilty, but the blood of Jesus Christ gives you eternal redemption. Hebrews 9.12 says, Neither by the, by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. 
he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. An earthly priest is no longer needed because Jesus Christ offered himself as the ultimate sacrifice, and it was enough to wash away every sin, past, present, and future. Hebrews 10, verses 10 through 12 says, By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all, and every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Hebrews 10.19 says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. So you can't even enter heaven without the blood of Jesus Christ applied to your soul. This is why Old Testament saints didn't go to the third heaven when they died. They went to paradise or Abraham's bosom in the heart of the earth. They are there now, but when they die, they only had the animal sacrifices and their sins weren't cleared. They needed the precious blood of the ultimate sacrifice, Jesus Christ, applied to their soul. The Lord Jesus Christ took all the sins of the world and became our sin on the cross. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He was so wounded and beaten that you couldn't even tell he was a man. It says in Isaiah 52, 14, Many were astonished. His visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. The only way to get your sins washed away permanently is through the blood that he shed when he suffered this brutal death on the cross. Isaiah 1, 18 says, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Our sins are red like crimson, but if we put our trust in Jesus Christ, his shed blood to save us, then they can be as wool. Abel's blood cried unto God from the ground in Genesis 4 and verse 10, but Jesus' blood speaks to God on our behalf. Hebrews 12, 24 says, And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. And we can see prophecies of Jesus Christ shedding his blood in Isaiah 53, verses 4 through 6. It says, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. You may be wondering why the verse I just read is in past tense. Because it is Old Testament and Jesus hadn't died yet. But the reason it is past tense is because of the one who wrote the book. God sees the whole picture. In his mind it had already happened. It is like when you watch a DVD, you have the power to fast forward to the end, rewind to the beginning, or just let it play through. God knows the future and knew even way back then in Leviticus that he would manifest himself in the flesh and die for the sins of the whole world. It says in Leviticus 17.11, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Notice that in Leviticus 17.11, the phrase, I have given it to you. God knew he would provide himself a lamb. Just like Abraham said in Genesis 22.8, it says, And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. So you can see there are prophecies of the Lord Jesus Christ shedding his blood in the Old Testament. We can only be saved through faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Romans 3, 25 through 28 says, Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness that he might be just 
and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus, where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. When you believe on the shed blood of Jesus Christ to save you, then you are not believing on your own righteousness to save yourself, but on the Lord's righteousness. Notice it says in verse 26, to declare, I say, at this time, His righteousness. When you place your faith in His blood, you aren't trying to justify yourself through your own works or the law. We should be careful not to give a bloodless gospel because the Bible makes it clear it is only through the blood of Jesus Christ we can have forgiveness of sins. Revelation 1.5 says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Hebrews 9.14 says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience, from dead works to serve the living God. First John 1 7 says, But if we walk on the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. First Peter 1 19 says, But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Ephesians 2 13 says, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. So without Jesus Christ's atonement on the cross, we can't be at one with God. The word atonement broken down is at one -ment. If you trust in the blood of Jesus Christ to save you, then you become at one with God. Throughout the Old Testament, God accepted the sacrifice of a lamb for atonement. As we read before, Leviticus 17.11, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Now the blood of Jesus Christ is the only atonement and only way we can be at one with God. All people who reject the blood have the wrath of God on them. And are not at one with God and can't be reconciled to God until they turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 18-21 says, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now, when, now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Colossians 1.20 nails it down for us that it is only through the blood of the cross we can have reconciliation. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in the earth, or things in heaven, and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. We can only be redeemed through his blood. If you have been redeemed, you have been bought back. Ephesians 1, 7 says, And whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Colossians 1, 14, And whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. 1 Peter 1, 8, and 19 for as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot Hebrews 9 12 neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us not only redemption but we can only get sanctification through his blood. Sanctify means to set apart and make holy. Hebrews 13, 12 says, Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Man always tries to make himself holy by doing good works, but the only way to, to be made holy enough to go to heaven is to have Jesus' blood applied to your soul. The blood sanctifies the moment the person believes on him. 
the blood of Jesus Christ justifies. So it redeems, sanctifies, and justifies. The word justify means to absolve from merited punishment and to accept as righteous on account of the merits of the Savior. So you're justified when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and His blood. Romans 5, 9 says, Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. Romans 4, 2 through 8 says, For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the Scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the, re the reward, not a reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed, imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. But not just justification, we get propitiation through his blood. Propitiation is the act of appeasing wrath. Romans 3.25 says, Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. 1 John 2.2 2 says, And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. 1 John 4.10 says, Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Jesus Christ satisfied the wrath of God when he became, became sin for us on the cross, and shed his blood. By believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, the wrath of God is took away from you because we, you believed on the one who was sent to be the propitiation for your sins. Only when you do this are you made favorable in God's sight. We overcome Satan, death, hell, and the grave, and sin through the blood of Jesus Christ. Revelation 12:11 shows the overcoming power of the blood. It says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. Satan can't accuse us before God about our sins because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Satan and unclean spirits inspired the new Bibles and wicked false prophets to remove and cast doubt on the blood of Jesus Christ. The new Bibles will take out the blood of Jesus Christ straight from the verse your King James Bible clearly says in Colossians 1.14, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. While the NIV and other versions remove the blood and say something like, In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. It is wicked and devilish to remove the blood. They removed the blood from the verse and it made the verse not even make sense. If you are redeemed, then you do have forgiveness of sins. But redeemed doesn't mean forgiveness of sins. It means to be bought back. People in the Old Testament had forgiveness of sins when they sacrificed the blood or when they sacrificed the lamb. But they didn't have redemption. The devil has led false prophets to teach that it was only Jesus' death that gives us eternal life. And the blood only represents his death. And that is obviously a lie from hell because look at all the verses we have mentioned that show you were got redemption and forgiveness, sanctification, propitiation, atoning, cleansing, and justification. All from the blood, not from his, just his death, but from him shedding his blood. But knowing this now that we get all those things through the blood of Jesus Christ, when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are sanctified, justified, you have propitiation, atonement, the cleansing, all through Jesus Christ and his shed blood. So now we're going to look at where did blood come from. And you may not agree with this, but I believe there's a, enough Bible to say this is true. Way back in Genesis, God tells Adam and Eve not to eat off of a tree. Genesis 2.17 says, 
but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. It doesn't say flat, say flat out what kind of tree this was in Genesis. And it doesn't say the fruit was an apple. So we have to search the scriptures to figure out what fruit it was. I believe it was a grape. And the grape is what put blood in their circulatory system. Deuteronomy 32.14 says the pure blood of the grape. It says butter of kine and milk of sheep with fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Bashan and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. Genesis 49.11 says in the blood of grapes. Look at it. Genesis 49.11 binding his his foal unto the vine, and his asses called unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Uh, Ezekiel 19.10 equates the grapevine with blood. Look at the verse. Thy mother is like a vine in thy blood, planted by the waters. She was fruitful and full of branches by reason of many waters. The Bible describes a grape vine as a tree. So people can't say grapes don't grow on trees because Adam and Eve could have eaten off of a vine tree. Not only does it describe a grape vine as a tree, but the grape is the only forbidden fruit in the Bible. Number 6 4 says, All the days of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree from the kernels even to the husk. That is number 6 4. Forbidding to eat some, forbidding someone to eat off of a vine tree. Ezekiel fifteen two says, "Son of man, what is the vine tree more than any tree, or than a branch which is among the trees of the forest?" Uh, Ezekiel fifteen six says, "Therefore thus saith the Lord God, is the vine tree among the trees of the forest, which I have given to the fire for fuel, so will I give the inhabitants of Jerusalem." It seems that before the fall, Adam had a water circulatory system without blood. When he ate the forbidden fruit of the vine tree, his water circulatory system turned into a blood circulatory system. The first miracle in the Old Testament was by Moses, who turned water into blood. Jesus' first miracle was turning water into wine with wine being a type of blood. When the Lord Jesus was on the cross and a soldier pierced his side, the Bible says, forthwith out came water and blood. In Second Samuel twenty three nineteen, David wanted water from the well in Bethlehem. Three of his mighty men break through the rest of the break through the host of the Philistines and got him that water. When they brought it back to David uh, he likens it with the blood of the men that put their lives in jeopardy. And then he poured the water out to the Lord. Also, the eating of blood is forbidden in every part of the Bible. This is because Adam and Eve fell through the eating of the forbidden fruit. And remember, grape juice is likened to blood in the Bible. The Bible forbids the drinking of blood before the law in Genesis 9-4. During the law in Leviticus 17.12 and after the law in Acts 15.29. The blood in Adam is what gave him physical life. Leviticus 17.14 says, For it is the life of all flesh, the blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, You shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh, for the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. People didn't always know that the life of the flesh is in the blood. So when people would get diseases, the doctors would bleed that person to death to try to get the disease out. But if they would have read the Bible, they would have seen the life of the flesh is in the blood. So when Adam sinned, it changed his water circulatory system into a circulatory system with corrupt blood. And he died spiritually that day. And would die physically later because the sinful, tainted blood running through his veins. He passed his blood on down to us. 
and since there was only one man with precious blood and that was the Lord Jesus Christ who had God's blood in his veins as it says in Acts 20:28. 20, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood you are a sinner and your only way to fix this is through the blood of Jesus Christ Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. God in the flesh, He came down and shed His blood for your sins. If you will put your trust on Him and His shed blood to save you, then you will be saved. If you don't get the blood of Jesus Christ applied to you, then you will burn forever in hell. Jesus Christ is the crucified, buried, and risen Savior. Jesus Christ will save anyone. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. John 6.37 says, All that the Father...